under this box is a special camera that I thought I would hate, but I really ended up loving it. What is this mystery camera? Well, it is the Z-Cam E2F6. Now Z-Cam lent me this camera for a month to just run through some tests, see if I liked it, and to use it on a short film that we just shot. And I really expected to hate this camera. I, I've watched other reviews on YouTube, I've seen other things that people have talked about, and I wasn't convinced with this camera until I got it in my hands and actually used it for myself. There's no such thing as being perfect, especially at the price range that I'm spending on cameras, and that's usually somewhere between $2,000 and $10,000. Of course, if you're going to spend $80,000, you can get a pretty perfect camera. But in this price range, this is all we're talking about. I have to say that I was super surprised in the quality of the Z-Cam E2 F6. Let's start off with some of the cons and some of the reviews and other things I read about with this camera. Let's do number one being that if you lost power, to this camera that you lost your footage. All your video clips, everything was gone. Well, they fixed that. So that is no longer the case. So that can't be a con anymore. Con number two, it does record internal raw, but there is no editing software that accepts the Z raw format. That's a con. That adds a little bit more work onto me to download their Zcam editing coloring software and then export and then go and edit. And then if I have to change anything, you have to go back to their software, recolor, export, and then send it back into your editing suite. That's a downside. Con no ProRes Quad 4. In this price range, I don't really expect a camera to be Quad 4. That's Apple ProRes 4444. I expect cameras in the $6,000 range to probably have Quad 4 recording, but this one does not. This is priced around $3,000. So that's a, that's a con, but you know, that's, that's not a deal breaker. Next, no monitor. One thing I did enjoy about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K and 4K is that you have a five inch screen monitor on the back of the camera. This is only external monitor. The little window here in the front is not big enough to monitor anything. So you always have to pay extra for an external monitor. Con, latency issues. I discovered that this had about 24 to 26 millisecond latency when you were plugged into an Atmos Ninja 5. That's not good, especially if you're pulling focus. So I talked to Zcam about that and they suggested turning off all the display settings on the camera and then using it that way. And the latency did improve. And then the latency to an external monitor is somewhere around 12 to 13 milliseconds. But when I did turn off all the settings, all the peaking, everything on the inside, it did speed up to about 14 to 15 milliseconds. Another big con the menu settings. 
I'm not a super fan of the way the menu's laid out. It is, it's deep and this camera can do a lot of shooting formats. So I understand why the menu is so deep, but there are certain things in certain places that I don't really like, like here's your codex over here and, and here's the image profile. And it's just, there's a lot and that can make this camera very confusing and very hard to deep dive into the menu system. I really wish they would come out with a, a much better UI. Another con is if you get below a certain point on your battery, it will not record. So if you see like you keep hitting the record button and you notice it's not recording, it's not going on to record, it's a battery, your battery's too low, swap it out and then you're good to go. The playback situation that I ran into, now I'm, I'm just comparing this to the two cameras, the Blackmagic Pocket 6K I own. This is a 6K E2 F6 6K full frame camera, but you know, versus Super 35 camera, but I did have some playback issues with this camera. And when I was trying to play back certain, there was some difficulty playing back 6K footage. That is a definite con. And if you were shooting, you know, 4K in 50 frames, I even had worse time trying to play back that footage on an external monitor. I could not replicate the issue I was having with the playback. And so I can only chalk that up to a faulty cable or maybe a, a adding an additional monitor plus a wireless transmitter. Not really sure, but I tried it out in the studio later and had no problems with the playback. So again, that might be a fault of mine. I can't swear that it's the camera. I can't swear that it's my HDMI cable. Another con they tell me is that the USB-C port is not stable enough for external recording. That's a downside because external SSD recording is so much cheaper than the CFast cards. And this is con or pro. You can take this either way, but the files on this camera are massive. At Apple ProRes 422-6K at 23.98, I got roughly, very roughly 40 minutes of footage per 512 gigabyte cards. And I really think that's, that's about all the cons I can come up with. So the pros about this camera, the full frame sensor, that's a definite pro. I like the positive lock, even though it's good, but you know, it, it's still an EF mount. So there's still little wobble. Therefore, I have to put a, a lens support on the bottom to keep it from wobbling, especially when I put a focus motor on there. I don't want my lens to wobble. You can hear a little bit of it there, but better than certain other just straight up EF mount attachments is that you have a positive lock attachment here for EF mount. Onto the mounts, another pro is you can switch this mount out to different types, one of those being a PL mount. So you switch this out to a PL mount, you put PL mount lenses on this, you won't have that issue. So it doesn't really matter. All the shooting formats from 6K to 4K to 5K to 60 frames to 120 frames, on down the list so many different types of shooting formats and frame rates that you would ever want to use on a camera. That's a positive. I didn't go through all of them. I have my preferences. I'm an Apple ProRes 422 guy or 444 guy, or I'm doing some kind of raw. That's my preference. 
So I didn't go through HLG. I didn't go through anything else. I just stuck to Apple ProRes 422 and then went to the Z-Log. That's going to be another pro. The Z-Log I was super impressed with. Now I shot a lot of stuff outside in shadow and very highlights, dynamic range, things like that, which really turned out to be very good dynamic range on this camera. Yeah, it was a little hot in the hot spots and the highlights there, but with the Z-Log profile and taking my, hot, my highlights down and moving up, moving my shadows down, I was able to get something pretty balanced and still get to see blue sky and bring down the highlights in the very hot spots of the sun and still see plenty within the shadows. So the dynamic range has got to be. Now this is not a scientific test, but I do swear that the dynamic range on this has to be at least 15 stops. At least. Maybe it's a little less than 15 stops. Maybe it's 14 stops. I know they advertise 15 stops, but whatever it is, it's good enough. It's not 10 and it's not seven. It's definitely in that 13 to 15 range. And with the Z-Log profile, you're definitely able to recover some of those highlights. Now, I did not shoot in raw. Just again, I, I was in a hurry. I only had so much time with this camera, so I couldn't really just do everything that I wanted to with this camera. And, and raw extra steps and doing all that, I, I decided not to shoot in raw. I just stuck to the Apple ProRes 422. Another added feature was the Apple ProRes 422 codex plus Rec 709 color profile. And when I shot with Rec 709, I was super impressed with the colors, just straight out the camera. I didn't shoot a lot with Rec 709, but I did some green screen stuff on this film. And I decided just to put it into Rec 709 and let it do the work for me. And then when I took it into the editing room, I would do the green screen from there. But Rec 709 straight out in the camera was beautiful. Another pro, when I took the footage into DaVinci Resolve, I downloaded the Z-Log plugin and I just slapped that guy onto, onto the footage and it looked great. I was super surprised with the, the color science behind this camera. I had to do very little tweaking with this camera. I just added a few things, put some contrast there, just help out, maybe desaturate a little bit because it does tend to oversaturate the colors a little bit. Especially, it's fine for internet work and commercials and things like that, but if you're going for a more cinematic kind of look, maybe you want to desaturate those colors a little bit. And then if I wanted to put a grade on top of that, I was able to do so with this. Which I'm showing you clips as I go. I'm showing you clips of what we shot as I go along talking about this camera. Another pro is that if you get an Atmos Ninja 5, it will record Apple ProRes RAW onto that Ninja 5. I'm not a super fan of external RAW recording, but a lot of people out there love it. I'm not a Final Cut Pro user. I'm not a Adobe Premiere user. I'm a DaVinci Resolve user. So the Apple Pro Res is not going to work for me, but it may suit you and you may love that feature. Again, that's something I did not test out because I don't have the software or the ability to test that out. I did not use MPF batteries. I had the two pin Limo to detap with my V-mount batteries, that's what I used. I didn't use the Sony MPF. I don't use any Sony MPF. Perfect selection, being able to use a external battery instead of popping on a, a Sony MPF battery. Another thing I didn't really get into was the Wi-Fi. I might check that before I return this camera to Zcam. I'll take a look at it. One of the things I wanted to test out was the wireless connection with this. I didn't do this on our short film because I didn't want to involve extra 
batteries and connections because you, when you have limited time, you don't want to add on too much to what's going on on your shoe. But to be honest, I wish I had because I realized that the menu settings on here are much better than on the camera. So I can change everything with just a click of a button here. So it displays everything. One of the things I had complications with was memorizing what frame rates at what resolutions. So in 6K, you could only shoot certain frame rates up to 29.97. And if you go through the menu system, you have to find your resolution and then see what frame rate will work with that. Here, you can just kind of select your resolution. Let's say Cinema 5K. Then I can just select my frame rate and it tells me automatically what my frame rate would be at its max. So another 2997. I have to drop down to 4K resolution. Then I can select my 60 frames per second. This is a much better setup to use with the app than it is with with the menu system on the inside. So I wish I did use this app before I started shooting my short film. All the settings are here for you. It's much better laid out here on the app than it ever is in camera. So it's taken that touch screen from other cameras and put it in the app and it's much better UI and laid out a whole lot better than what it is in the camera. And if you're doing live streaming, things like that, you know, with your ethernet, you have an ethernet port here. So if you're doing that type of stuff, this might be a beautiful camera for you. I mean, again, it's all preference stuff. You know, there's no such thing as the perfect camera, but this has a lot of features of a perfect camera that many people might find fascinating for their kind of work and their work style. I'm, I run this channel, but I'm not like a live streamer type. What I do is mostly commercials, product shoots, and short films, and full feature films, and documentaries. To say this is probably, I haven't shot, a, actually, I've got a documentary coming. I'm going to use this camera to shoot on. So it's, it's going to work for interview settings, which is what's coming up that I'm going to use this camera on. It's just a basic interview. Perfect camera for that. And again, the image quality that comes out of this camera is fantastic. Fell in love with it. But that's my workflow. That's what I do professionally. I don't... Professionally, I'm not a streamer. I just bring this to you guys for fun. And to be honest, I love talking to people like Zcam about their tech and getting to try their cameras and see what's new and what's coming out. Now, the ultimate question has to be, would I purchase this camera? I would say yes. I'd be very confident in purchasing this camera. To be honest with you, the image quality is great. The workflow is amazing with Apple ProRes and the Z-Log is fantastic, and even the Rec. 709 that saves me some steps from color correcting is also fantastic straight out the camera. So yes, I would, I would feel confident putting this camera on any job that I have, and I would seriously look into maybe purchasing this camera. And if not purchasing this exact camera, maybe purchasing the Zcam E2 S6 G, which is their global shutter camera that they just came out with. I think that would be a perfect arsenal to my ecosystem. And I know I'm a little bit late on the Zcam bandwagon, but with all its quirks and little bit of issues that I had, this is really a fantastic camera. And like I said, I'm probably looking into purchasing one to have in my studio to help me out with my workflow. I really hope you enjoyed this video 
And I hope you saw a very honest opinion about this Zcam E2 F6 camera. And maybe you learned something and maybe it swayed you a little bit into buying one and maybe a dent. But it is a good camera company and I really look forward to seeing what they're going to do in the future. So I really hope you got something out of this video. And if you did, remember to hit that like and hit that subscribe and to go out there and keep shooting.